Okay, so first of all, I'm going to import pandas as PD. Then I need to get my data. So at the moment, all of my data is in this Excel spreadsheet. So I'll go to the folder where this file is and select the file and then go to copy path. Then I'll go back to Jupyter Notebook and I'll make the data equal to pd.read underscore Excel, open brackets. Then I'll paste in the folder path. Then I need a comma and I need to put in quotation marks sheet one because that is the name of the sheet that has all my data in it. Then I need to take all of these backslashes and turn them into forward slashes. Then we can have a look at this data. And this is the same data that I was just looking at in Excel. Then I can add dot core onto the end of this. And core stands for correlation. And this will make me a correlation table. Then I can do dot round and put the number two in here. And that will round all of those numbers to two decimal places. I can also change the method by making it equal to Spearman. And this will calculate the correlations using Spearman's rank instead. If you want to know more about how to use the core function in pandas, then you can have a look at this web page here. Now I'll turn this into a variable. So I'll make it equal to my matrix. Then I'm going to color all of these cells. So I'll do my matrix dot style dot background underscore gradient, open and close brackets. And this colors all of these cells. So higher numbers get a darker blue. I can change the color by using C map, which stands for color map. And I'll change this to greens, for example. Then another option I have is to do pd.plotting.scatter underscore matrix. And then I'll put my matrix in here. And we end up with a figure that looks like this. Now to get rid of all of the text at the top, I'm going to import matplotlib.py plot as plt. And then underneath this, I need plt.show. I also want to increase the size of the figure. So in here, I will do fig size is equal to and then I'll make this eight by eight. And now when we run this, it's a little bit easier to see. So we have down the middle all of the distributions, and then in each of the boxes is data from one column plotted against all of the other columns. So we can see all of the different correlations. Now we can also turn this into a heat map. So I'll import Seaborn as SNS. And then I will do SNS.heatmap. And then I'll put in my matrix. And we end up with a heat map that looks like this. Now with Seaborn, there are lots of different color palettes that you can choose from. At the moment, we are using Rocket because that's the default, but we can change it to be whatever we want. So I'm going to change mine by doing C map is equal to blues. And then this changes it to all different shades of blue with higher numbers getting a darker blue. I can also reverse this by doing underscore R and this will flip the scale around. So now higher numbers are a lighter blue and lower numbers are a darker blue. I don't actually want this though, so I'll undo that. You'll also notice at the moment that 
the scale doesn't go all the way down to zero. So in order to fix that, I'm going to do V min is equal to zero. And then for the sake of completeness, I'll also do V max is equal to one. And with the maximum and the minimum, you can control where the color scale starts and ends rather than relying on Seaborn to work it out. Then we can also add in annotations. So I'll do an not is equal to true. And this adds in all of the correlations as the numbers. Then I want to make the figure bigger. So I'll do plt.figure. And then inside brackets, I will put fig size is equal to, and then another set of brackets. And then I'll put 10, 8. And these numbers go width height in that order. And now I end up with a much larger figure. I can also change the number formatting. So FMT stands for format. And in quotation marks, I'll put 0.2F. And this will change everything so that it is two decimal places. And I can also do square is equal to true. Now I think I've done a reasonably good job of getting all of the boxes to look like actual squares by selecting the correct figure size, but you can force them to be actual squares no matter what the figure size is by using square equals true. There are lots of different options with the Seaborn heat map and if you want to know more you can look at this web page here. The last thing that I'm going to show is how to add a mask to this heat map. So the top triangle here is a mirror image of the bottom triangle. And so all of the information is duplicated and you really only need one half of the heat map. So I'm going to create a mask that will cover the top triangle. And in order to do that, I need to import NumPy as NP and then in here I'll put NP.triu open brackets NP.ones underscore like open brackets then I need to put in my matrix and then D type is equal to boolean and I'll just comment this out for a second so we can see what this looks like and we end up with an array where the top triangle is all trues and the bottom triangle is all falses. Now I'll get rid of the comments and I'll make this into a variable. So I'll make it equal to my mask. And then inside of heat map, I will make mask equal to my mask. And then when I run this now, I end up with just the bottom half of the heat map. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to make a correlation matrix in Python, and that is everything.